Mr. Martin. Uh, I am the living man. It's uh, been, I'm not a man. I am a living man known by the name of that. Uh, sure. So uh, listen, for purposes of communicating with you, I'm going to call you Mr. Martin. I can clearly see that you are a living man because you're talking. Most, most dead men don't talk. So, um, there's a, you know, there's Mr. Martin, this is case 231510OT, people of the city of Taylor versus Eric Martin. Today's the date and time set for your motion for return of moped and also a motion for to dismiss uh, the, the cases. This is your motion, sir. Go ahead. Have you read the motion already? Yeah, I've read the motion. I'm just asking you, are you standing on, uh, are you just going to stand on the motion that you filed, which is fine. You can do that. I was giving you the opportunity to um, make oral argument if you wanted to. Right. Well, just uh, um, first, I want to say on the so-called charge against me, I am, enter I am entering a special appearance. Um, okay. That is in no way a general jurisdictional granting appearance. Um, I challenge the jurisdiction of this court. Uh, the contract that I have knowingly, willingly, and voluntarily entered into with this court that grants any jurisdictional authority over me as a living man. If there's any such contract with the court, I uh, demand the court present it. Also, I want to say I'm here by threatened arrest. I'm not here willingly. Um, you know, like I said, threatened arrest is the normal. If you don't show up, arrest warrant, etc. Um, now, in response to uh, what to say about the motion, um, yeah. In the reason, first, I want to point out the reason I don't like I don't like using the word motion because I know that tradition. You know, I use the word demand um, because it's, it's based on the Constitution, right? You know, my human rights. So, how I've been taught in the law, these are the words I like to use. If I use the word request motion, you know, that's not right because you request privileges. You know, I mean, you demand right. That's how I've been taught. So that's how I learned. So I just want to say that, you know, so, you know, I don't want you to think take it personal or nothing like that. Hopefully, you know, it just demanded my right. But uh, I don't want you to think, you know, hey, I'm the judge here. You know, who are you to demand? But it's demanded rights. But anyway, so, again, it's based on my right to private property, my due process. In the due process of the Michigan Constitution, no state law that they are trying to use have wrote up about it justified by my Constitution. And the Jew was trying to use state statutes, unconstitutional state statute law, but that doesn't justify the private, my private property. Why it didn't justify depriving me of it then? and not continuing to deprive me of it now. I do not need to pay no money for it back from the towing place. Um, and there's no injured party now in the case. I want to mention that too. So the plaintiff has no standing against these so-called criminal charges. Um, there's no standing because there's no injured party. And I have a U.S. Supreme Court case on that, so I'll move to dismiss the case on that. Standing is a necessary, this is word for word, U.S. Supreme Court case uh, called Ramey's versus Bird. Standing is a necessary component of subject matter jurisdiction. Then we go to another case. The requirement of standing, however, has a core component derived directly from the Constitution. A plaintiff must allege personal injury barely traceable to the defendant's allegedly unlawful conduct. I can't think of nothing else to say now. Uh, I reserve anything else to say, though, if anyone else has something to say. Um, if there's any dispute um, that it's not my private property, I'd like to hear that. And that's it for now. All right. Uh, Mr. Greco. Yes, addressing uh, each of the requests here, which I believe are a motion to dismiss the charges and uh, the um, return of property or uh, wrongfully impounded uh, moped. Uh, Your Honor, the defendant has been charged with driving while license suspended, revoked, or denied upon information and belief. And looking at the record, it looks like it's revoked. To He was operating a moped 
June 11, 2023, in the city of Taylor. Uh, when he was pulled over by the officer, he was unable to produce a license uh, that he had. Or if you are under a certain age, but up to a certain age, I believe it's 15 or above, you can get, if you don't have a driver's license, a special moped driving permit. But the charge is appropriate, and therefore the motion to dismiss with respect to the charge should be denied. Number two, with respect to the impound, here we have a driver who's not able to operate what is classified as a motor vehicle under the motor vehicle code, this moped, and uh, is being, it's on the side of the road. We can't keep it there. He can't take it. He can't drive it. For safekeeping more than anything else, it gets impounded. At that point in time, Mr. Martin is able to go get the moped if he wants. Yes, he has to pay for it because it has to get taken into custody because we can't just leave it on the side of the road. So we request that the motions motion slash motions be denied in their entirety. I have some say in response to that. Sure. I wasn't required to have any license, as I pointed out in my demand for dismissal of the case, because as the federal statute I've mentioned, eight, no, well, first let me mention the state statute. It defines a motor vehicle as one just mechanically drawn. The Michigan state statute is unconstitutional and this, the definition is not complete because the, as the federal statute I cited, made by Congress, 18 U.S. 31 subsection 6 and 10, makes it clear the definition of a vehicle by the federal statute is one, mechanically drawn and used to passenger property for profit, which I was not doing. They do not have evidence that I was doing that. Because as the U.S. Supreme Court said in the case, as I cited, that the people have a right to travel. This is a long recognized right. Constitutional on the due process clause, the right to life, liberty, or property. That's one of the liberties we are entitled to. A right, not a privilege we need to request the DMV for as the book process and lawsuit right to make because of this. So the cop relying on this and people stop being harassed our right to travel. No state shall convert a liberty into a privilege. License it and charge a fee therefore. Murdoch versus Pennsylvania I write in this case also, but this is what's going on with the state statutes. See, they're assuming everyone's driving a motor vehicle or not. See, there's a difference between a motor vehicle, which is just one used commercially for profit, such as a DoorDash driver, a taxi driver. Those, that's when you're technically driving a motor vehicle. When you're not doing it for profit, which is what I was doing, going to Walmart or Joyride, whatever I want to do, go to work, that's not for profit. That is what's called traveling. And this is terminology from the Supreme Court themselves, along with other law I mentioned. It's called traveling in my private property. One of the legalese tricks, whoever the, uh, well, excuse my terminology, whoever the scumbags was that made this stuff, because I think it was intentional. It's an intentional evil plan with this. So the average person don't know what's going on. It's a shame. Summing up, it's, it, I'm all within my right to travel. It's uh, stealing my personal property. The state statute cannot justify stealing my private property. Finally, Greco did not um, respond and therefore waived his response to my uh, no injured party uh, defense. That'll be it now. With, I reserve my respond back to anything he may say that I haven't said already. I heard from both parties. Mr. Greco, was there anything further? No. So, uh, Mr. Martin, through your oral argument and written briefs, you've raised a couple of uh, issues. So let me address those seemingly in the order in which you raised them. Now, you argue that this court lacks jurisdiction over you. The question of whether a court has personal jurisdiction over a party is a question of law. And that can be stated in uh, Poindexter versus Poindexter, and that's 234 Mishap 316, 1999. Typically, a plaintiff bears the burden of establishing jurisdiction over a defendant. However, a plaintiff here, the prosecution, only needs to make a prima facie showing of jurisdiction in order to defeat any motion to dismiss based on a motion to dismiss for lack of jurisdiction. Before a court can obligate a party to comply with its orders or proceed to trial or do any of these proceedings, 
the court must have personal jurisdiction over an, over, over a party. I think we all agree to that, that that's true. Jurisdiction over a person may be established in a couple of ways, by way of general personal jurisdiction or specific or limited personal jurisdiction. So exercise of, juris, of general jurisdiction is possible anytime that the defendant contacts, touches, comes in contact with the forum state or the forum city or the forum body of, of government. It's such a way that the nature and quality are to enable a court to adjudicate any action against the defendant, even when the claim at issue does not arise out of contracts or, uh, with the with the forum. Here, basically, it states that the, the, ex, the existence of any of the following relationships between an individual and the state shall constitute a sufficient basis of jurisdiction to enable the courts of record of the state to exercise general personal jurisdiction over the individual or his representative and to enable such courts to render personal judgments against the individual or representative. And they, and they, they point to three things specifically that I want to raise. One, presence in the, in the governmental unit or city at the time when process is served, domicile in the city, and consent. In the present case, Mr. Martin was physically within the boundaries of the city of Taylor at the time of the alleged criminal activity when he was served with the ticket. Sec second, Mr. Martin is also domiciled in the city of Taylor, which means he lives in the city of Taylor. The city of Taylor has ordinances regarding basically everything that the state does, and one of those is that you have to drive with a license. So I do find that there is personal jurisdiction over you. You availed yourself of the use of the streets here in Taylor. You live in Taylor and you were served in Taylor. Therefore, you fall under the jurisdiction of the Taylor court here, which is the 23rd district. Court. As for standing, standing is a legal term which basically determines whether the party can bring a lawsuit or has a right to do so. Standing is not about the issues. It's about who is bringing the lawsuit and whether they have a legal right to sue. So if you are suing your government, if you have no, if you have no damage, if you have no harm done to you, why are you bringing a lawsuit? Here, this isn't about harm. This is this isn't about a civil suit. This isn't for some some violation of rights. This isn't a, a claim for money damages because you weren't allowed to live where you want to live or marry who you want to marry or some other form of federal type of a, a situation that's a constitutional based or a tort based thing. This is a governmental unit doing their job under the Constitution to enforce the laws of their cities and states. The, the standing that they have is that they can show by a preponderance of the evidence, they can show that there is probable cause that you committed, that there was a crime committed and that you committed the crime in the city of Taylor. That's all they need for standing. That's all they need is that and along with personal jurisdiction. We've already established that there's personal jurisdiction. So as to your standing argument, there, there is no standing argument. As for abandoning, abandoning the vehicle or impounding the vehicle, under Michigan Compiled Law 257.252A about abandoned vehicles, it specifically states a person shall not abandon a vehicle in this state. So if you are arrested or you are using something as the instrumentality for committing a crime, you have a right to a trial, but that evidence has to be preserved and they can't just leave vehicles laying around on the side of the road. It's for the protection of the evidence and it's also for a protection for you because you can't just leave it on the side of the road because I know it's hard to steal a car. But if a moped, someone could just pull up, throw it in the back of their pickup truck, and now you're with, now you're without a moped. Then you might have a lawsuit against the city for not doing their job of having it impounded and protecting your vehicle, protecting your moped. That's why it's taken. Your moped is in safekeeping, and that's what they're supposed to do. So uh, under the under the abandoned vehicle statute, they do have a right to to do that when there's a crime committed. So now that that brings us to our last point about. The fact that you you think that there's an underlying reason why this should just be dismissed outright, just a general dismissal, because you have a right to travel. You do have a right to travel. Matter of fact, the right to travel is a fundamental right. And we can freely use the roads, since why? Well, they're funded by tax dollars. However, the privilege to drive a vehicle can be conditioned, conditionally granted even, based upon being licensed, based on following the laws that are set forth by the government. Driving is a privilege that a state can prohibit if they consider it. You do not have a constitutional right to drive a vehicle. You have a right, you can walk your happy self 
all over the state. You can forest gump that thing all the way from one end of the country to the other. You can go ahead and jog your way back and then back again. You can't drive a vehicle if you don't have a license. I'm going to go to Florida. I'll give you a free. How about if I am, let's just say a hypothetical. I'm going to give you a free trip to Florida, Mr. Martin. All expense paid and there's no air, no air flare, no air feeds because I have a private jet, but I'm the pilot. You're going to fly with me? I've never even taken a class about flying a plane. Don't even have a pilot's license. But you know what? I got a right to travel. I'll fly a plane if I want to. Does that make any sense? No. Why? Because planes can crash and kill people. Planes can crash and kill people. Cars can kill people. We want to make sure people are licensed to drive vehicles. Why? Because you're interacting with other vehicles that weigh thousands of pounds that are moving at rates of speed 30 miles an hour and higher. There's literally a National Traffic Safety Administration. Why? Because it's a dangerous situation. Yes, we need it, and yes, it's necessary. But because of that, the driving privilege can be revoked. The right to drive a motor vehicle can be revoked. The right to have, I, I, trust me, I'm the most firm believer in the right to keep and bear arms. But if you're not mentally in the right state of mind or if, some, if, if there's some sort of reason why everyone has agreed that, you know what, this guy should not be having any weapons. He's, a, he's threatening to kill himself. You know what, for his own safety, let's get the weapons out of his hand. Now, the reason we have weapons it isn't so we can go hunting. It's so we can protect ourselves against the usurpation by our despotic government of any of our rights. I get that. And I understand that. But at the same time, I'm not going to fly in a plane with a pilot who's never even taken a class, doesn't have a license. And we, and that's why driving is a privilege. It, it, it's based on, on the, the, the character and nature of the activity. Yes, you can travel. You can ride a bike. You can pedal yourself around. You can walk anywhere you want to. You don't need to show your papers when you go from Michigan down to Ohio. Your papers, please. This isn't Russia, but you can't drive if you don't have a license. And so based on all of those things, based on the oral arguments that were presented today um, by both sides, based on the written briefs and answers to the same, I am uh, denying your motion to dismiss. And I am uh, denying your motion for the return of the moped. So this case is going to be set for a pre-trial. Since we're here, we're going to do an arraignment on the uh, underlying charge. Mr. Martin, would you like a court-appointed attorney, sir? Oh, will I be accepting uh, no court-appointed attorneys? Because I will not be, uh, they can fraudulently assume I'm under the jurisdiction of the court. I invoke yeah. my right to be uh, acknowledged as a sovereign, one of the sovereign people, as the U.S. Supreme Court said I have a right to do. Invoke my rights under the uh, public and formal government, Article 4, Section 4. So I won't be accepting no attorney. Okay. Uh, so you do have you do have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you at trial. Like I stated, you also have the right to an attorney. And at any point, if you'd like the assistance of an attorney, please don't hesitate to ask the court, and I will grant the same. It is alleged that on uh, July the 11th of 2023, that you violated City Ordinance 3200B, which is commonly known and referred to as driving on a license that has been revoked. That's a misdemeanor punishable by 93 days in jail and or up to $500 in fines. As to that charge, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? I'm not here to plead because uh, I do not acknowledge myself as no defendant. That's fraudulent. I'm not a legal fiction. Right. Then I find you to, then I, then I recognize you as standing mute as to the charge and I'll enter a plea of not guilty. Okay. And we're okay. going to set this. So, this so we're not going to. Okay. Have you entered a legal determination that I am not guilty of the charges? No, nope, I've just put in a. Uh, a plea right now at this time of not guilty and uh we'll set this for a trial the adjudication of your constitutional right to have a trial by judge or by jury um that will determine uh beyond a reasonable doubt if it's proven whether you're guilty or not guilty pursuant to the constitution okay um, i still have some things to say in response to what you said today yeah so i have some responses in response to what you said today um such as is it okay if i say it now your response to what you what you said said today um after we we made the argument some things uh still have some things to say in response to that um oh you're okay, saying you would like to make a response to the ruling i made with regard to your two motions yeah there's no response to be made to it i mean if you'd like to make a record you're more than welcome to file any motions that you'd like under the court rules 
But well, that's, that, that's, that's, that, that was merely my ruling as to two motions that were in front of me, the motion to for return of the moped and the motion to dismiss. So, Mr. Greco, if you would, uh, if you would uh, put that in order. I, yeah, I object to it, and I have some more to say about that, and that is... Um, you know, well, what I'm saying, part sir, part sir, sir, hang on, because and, and I'm not trying to cut you off. I'm trying to protect your constitutional rights, because anything you say can and will be used against you. I just want to, I just want you to be aware of that. Okay. Yeah, I got so you. what I'm saying, so what I'm saying is, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change the ruling today. If you want to file a motion for reconsideration, you can do that. You have the right to do that under the court rules. No. I might not remember everything because you said a lot of different things and it might be hard to remember everything and respond, but I still got some things memorized I want to say now, so I want to say them. Uh, you, that is you do also, you do also, and I, like I said, at any time, if you'd like a court appointed attorney, I can give you a court appointed attorney. But you could also order a copy of the transcript so that way you don't have to remind, that way you don't have to remind yourself of anything. You can just, everything that was stated is already on the transcripts. That is, and they try to charge money again. Again, it's, it's a big mon monetary thing. You know, they're trying to turn rights into privileges, charging money, 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 well, and I don't have money for that. It's not about charging money, money, money. When I go to the store, I don't just get to walk out with bread. I mean, I got to pay for the bread because somebody made the bread. So somebody has to, somebody has to type a transcript. So well, this is also on YouTube. So for all my YouTube watchers out there, hey, how you doing? God bless America. You can also watch a copy of YouTube. It's supposed to be deleted by eight o'clock tomorrow morning, but God knows it won't be because it's my cases. So you'll be able to watch it probably for as long as you ever want to. So you can see it again. Make sure I check it out. Anyways, I still want to finish. Uh, let me uh, finish what I have to say. Let me respond to uh, what else you said now. You have a right to travel, but we don't have a right to drive a motor vehicle. Okay, now. On the terminology, travel by right and drive the motor vehicle is not the same. And I can be controlling my moped, okay? I can be controlling a motorcycle car by right. It's not if I only walk or didn't say that. Traveling by right is, means as long as I am not. Um, carrying passengers or property for pro profit. I'm doing that my private vehicle, which what I was doing. I wasn't working for DoorDash. There's no evidence. I wasn't working as a taxi driver doing nothing else. I was therefore traveling by right. If I was in a car, same thing. If I am not carrying passenger property for profit, I it's am incorrect. Not you're incorrect. I'm just telling you, you're incorrect. You're incorrect. I've, I've taught constitutional law for. Uh, almost twenty years. Hey, you're incorrect. You don't have a right. You don't. You do not have a right to travel by any means you choose. So that's the place I'm going to go. I'm going to go buy myself a helicopter. And I'm going to fly to work every day. No license, helicopter, and then I'll just call myself an Uber helicopter. I'm sure everybody would like to show up at the parties in a helicopter. You can't do it. You have to have a license to drive because it's a dangerous activity. You can walk anywhere you want to. You do. I agree. You have a right to travel, but it's not by any means you choose. Obviously, the right to travel means it doesn't matter how a, a human cannot dictate. Or you can't. Sir, I have other cases to get. I have other cases to get to. So um, I'm not trying to cut you off, but if you want to file a motion for reconsideration, you're more than welcome to do so. Well, you are. You are coming so much short because I still want to talk. I have the First Amendment right to speak, and I still continue. You do have a First Amendment. Again, there you go. Again, a First Amendment right. A first Amendment right to speak doesn't mean you have a First Amendment right to speak. As it means that you have a First Amendment right. Not to have the government interfere with your right to speak. That means right. that if you want to go stand on and so in someone's sidewalk and give a speech or hold a sign, you can do that. The government can't stop you from doing that. But if you want to walk around naked, the government can stop you from doing that. Even if you call it free speech, why? Because it's indecent. Well, there's rules to there's rules to everything. Everyone everyone says, "Well, I have a right to say what I want to." No, you don't. Not a, not in a private situation. So, like, if you're at someone's house and you're talking about whatever, there's like, hey, stop that, and you're like, well, I have a right to, I have a right to say what I want to. No, you don't. Not against private citizens. See, everyone just misuses and throws that word out so quick that they don't even know what they're talking about. It's kind of like right to travel. But anyway, um, if you have a motion to for reconsideration, the court will review that and set that for a hearing. But I made my, I made my determination uh, today with regard to your motions. Okay.
Well, I'm also going to make, well, because you made your determination, which is unfair, unconstitutional, I'm going to make a motion to disqualify you, which I then, therefore, if you're going to deny that too, I request you send it to the state court administrative office that you're supposed to do under the court rule. That you showed your bias by denying my constitution rights, which you put no foothold, you know, such as denying my right to uh, travel, my right to my private property by using all oh, the state can make money off me and use their state statutes of my constitutional rights. I don't think so. That's not true. And they cannot charge money for my private property. No state law, you should know that. They cannot use that as a reason to violate my constitutional rights and charge me money for my private property. No, that is criminal stealing, larceny. It's violating my constitutional rights. You're supposed to be upholding my rights as you took also, not violating it working conspiring with the state making money and that's all it is it's a it's like a eco thing going on you prosecute you at the office all right that's so all right sir so you've made the same argument several times um and i do note that for the record um your your objections are noted but then again I, so my response to that is I'm not changing my ruling with regard to the motion to dismiss or the motion for return of the mobile. There are other options that you have available. Um, if you think you need to file a motion to disqualify, please file the motion and we'll set it for a hearing. I make sure that everybody follows the same rules and how things go. And just because uh, you get someone gets ruled against at a motion hearing, um, we don't just keep talking about it until the judge changes his mind. It's not how, that's not how it works. There's procedures in place, and I'm just making sure that all of your constitutional rights are been afforded to you. So um, uh, you have several options of how you can proceed, but right now the uh, this case has already been heard and decided, and uh, we're going to be moving the the court's going to be moving on to other cases that need to be taken care of. It's okay. I'm going to correct. That's not totally correct what you said. It ain't just I just keep talking and not repeating myself. You're when you say things, you're saying something new that I haven't had a chance to say or respond to before you say it. There isn't there isn't there isn't a response, or it's my it's my ruling. It's not a response. There's no response necessary. That's that's my due process right to respond. What do you mean? No, your due process is the fact that you had the right to come in here. Due process is affording someone one both opportunity to be heard and the the uh, the the venue to be heard. Here we are in the court. I allowed you to come in. We're we're here by Zoom. You had the right to file all your paperwork. All your paperwork was handwritten. And you know what? I accepted all of it. Why? Because that's part of due process. I gave you the benefit of the doubt of being someone who's in pro per. That's fine. Not a problem. I heard your motion. I allowed you to make oral argument on your motion. I afforded due process to Mr. Greco, where I allowed him to make a response on the record. I asked you right in the beginning, would you like to, is there anything you wanted to say for oral argument or did you just want to stand on your on your brief that you filed and you went ahead and made oral argument? That's that's allowing you due process. This is, this is all everybody playing the game. This is everybody doing their part and having the opportunity to play the game. And that's what I afforded every single individual. I take offense if there's uh, to any comment that you state that I don't try, that I'm trying to railroad you or any kind of thing, because you know what? The Constitution is the most important thing to me. The Constitution is what gives every one of us freedom. Constitution is when I get woke up in the middle of the night to sign a search warrant. God bless them. God bless them. Thank you for waking me up in the middle of the night to sign a search warrant. You want to know why? Because that's the Constitution breathing. That's the Constitution doing what some... A couple of a bunch of guys back hundreds of years ago said, you know what, this is what freedom is about. So you know what, I take offense to anything like that. So if you'd like to file a motion for disqualification or for reconsideration, please do so. But at this point, your case has been heard. A decision has been made. Thank you, Mr. Martin, and have a good day, sir. But, well, okay, again, I you did allow me some time to... Mr. Phantom. Good morning, Judge. 